Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to Love at First Laugh, the green room edition. Oh my God, today I have an amazing guest that I absolutely adore and admire. This woman is, I, I don't know where to begin, really. It's just insane. She's been uh, on everything. She's been on Up All Night. You've seen her. She was the host and she was so funny and amazing. She's been on a ton of sitcoms, including Cheers, among many others. She is the author of Up All Night, and we're going to talk about that book because, oh, we're going to learn a lot about this lady. She is something else. And she is the founder of Rhonda Shear Intimates. Uh, obviously, it's Rhonda Shear. She is right here with us. Oh, Hi, Rhonda. That's great. Thank you for the beautiful intro. Thank you, Grace. I've just, I've just been, I'm just been around so many years that I've done a lot. That's all it is. <laughs> That's, I'm like a bat just hanging around. <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes. Like, you know, when I talk to younger people, it's like, they're like, oh my God, you've done so I'm like, I've been around a long time, right? You, you know, you just keep going. Well, I love it though, because yeah. I think what you and I have in common is we, we still have that drive and a lot of people either lose it or they lose interest and that's fine too. It's fine, whatever, wherever life takes you. But I drive my cra husband crazy still having drive and it's not necessarily in show business, but whatever I'm after, it's like, I want to do it. Like he says, he's the ha he's the tortoise and I'm the hare and I want everything like now, but that's like LA, everything, yeah. these things that don't happen that fast in LA, but they do. Once they cast you, things move very fast, but we don't, you know, it takes a long time for production, you know, to get green lit and, and to happen. But once, you know, we're, we're in, if you're just in the, as an actor and you get cast, then it moves pretty fast. Absolutely. And you feel, did you feel like everything when it, you started popping, like blowing up, like everything happened at the same time? Oh my gosh, 1984, I moved out to LA. I told you I'm a bat a long time ago. And I moved out to LA in 1978. And so I, I saw a lot of old Hollywood. I still had, you know, little bits and pieces truly of the same restaurants. And I loved old Hollywood. So um, 1983, 84 was like fire for me. Like, but my dad passed away that year. So it was kind of like I flipped out. And I really did. And that set me back. And I went back to, I'm from New Orleans, as you know, you're from New Orleans too. Yeah. So I went back and I stayed there. I just had like, a, I don't know, I think it was like a mini breakdown. I mean, I was yeah. only, I was 29. I, I just didn't know how to deal with it. And it's a shame because everything was really, I had um, George Shapiro was my manager who hit managed Seinfeld. I mean, mm -hmm. I, you know, I had like this great management team and it was like, I just walked away from it. And wow. thing in LA, you know, you can't get that. I'm not saying you can't get momentum back, but when you have that magic moment and so yeah. just things like that happen though, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, I, I literally, I got cast in a, in a cheers. That's what's funny. You said that I got cast in a really nice role in cheers. And I, it was right around, right after my father passed away or a few months. And I got to the set and I literally froze, like fr not words, like I sat down and I thought I was gonna die. I thought I had some kind of, I was inflicted with something. And I quit, I walked off the set. And they were so lovely to me, the people, the, the, the producers and the casting director, which never happens, my, my agent, told them I, that I was really going through, you know, you know, paying with my dad's death. And sure. they brought me back for a smaller role, but they did bring me back um, a, a couple of months later, a few months later, which was very nice. It wasn't that nice meaty role that could have led to something though, but. But things happen, you know, when you're doing what we do, you, we're constantly on the go, we're constantly doing projects, constantly coming up with stuff. And then life happens. And yes, it's going to interrupt your flow. It's just a well, given. That has happened. You know, I, I couldn't, you know, when I was out there and I started, like, I just didn't think, of, I, I didn't think about getting married and getting pregnant. Like that, that what my focus yeah. wasn't there at all. It was like career, career, career. And then also in those years was the jiggle women. It was like the women, like, you know, the hot girl. I mean, all yeah. the roles were like, you were the victim, but that was it. Yeah. I mean, that, those were the roles for women, whether it was sitcom or whether you were, you were the, the bimbo. So, I mean, I went with it. I wanted to work. I, I wasn't going to go, I'm going to wait for that role. I didn't have any friends out in LA or didn't have any, any relations in LA that were going to say, Oh, wait for this role. So I took all those roles, but those were, those were prime roles. But, um, you know, I just had Judy Landers on, on, on my show. You know, 
and the Lander sisters, and they did so well. And she, it's funny because she, she kind of walked away from it in the 80s and got married. I didn't realize that she got married and had a baby, but that was, her, you know, her choice. Although she still gets cast and she still works, they come to her, but they did so well, you know, back in the 80s and 90s. But I think that, you know, that, that was very brave because women just that were playing those roles. Mm -hmm. You, you didn't want anybody to think you were even going with someone, which is terrible. I mean, that would that would put women back a million years today. I mean, the whole Me Too movement and like you Absolutely. had to have the aura of that you were single and free, even though you weren't. I wasn't going to do anything with anyone, but it was that whole you're playing this role, then you have to come off as that role. Absolutely, so it's, kind of, it's kind of funny. It it did you know it, it messes with you or at least back then. Yeah. And I think well, a little bit, a little bit of that is in the book, you know, that I talk about. Yes. And I love that. I love that. And you talk about uh, being a good girl in a bad girl's body. And so what place, other than Hollywood, you know, you're going to feel that dichotomy, you know, like bad girl, good girl. So how did you resolve that inner conflict? Um, well, I, you know, I, I took all, you know how they make you do all the pictures. I mean, I don't know if it's different now, maybe things are more in line, but you know, I had to have like the, the pictures done and the Z card and I would always do the girl next door. And no matter how hard I tried, it just never came off. And there was a very famous casting director named Joyce Selznick. She was huge mm -hmm. back in the day. She was, I mean, like old time Hollywood. She was like one of those crossovers. And I got a general meeting. They would set these general meetings and I had a general meeting with her. And it was before I had my nose done, which wasn't a bad nose, but it was a little higher here. And she looked at me and she goes, I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't get that nose fixed, you're never going to be a leading lady. And I'm like, oh, and I had one Miss Louisiana with my old nose, but she goes, you're going to get your, your nose is all right, but if, they're not going to light for you. They're going to light for stars and you're going to be a secondary um, member or a secondary cast member and your nose is going to look horrible. And that just stayed with me until I finally oh, did. My God, that and then another casting director said, you know, it doesn't matter how hard you you try to, put, to play the girl next door. You never will because your mouth moves too sexy. <laughs> I can't. What? When you talk, your mouth, I'm, I'm asymmetric. I, I can't do anything about that. I can't. That's hilarious. Oh, my God. Now I see why you had to become a comedian because this is like. Ridiculous. I had to make fun of it. I had to make yeah. fun of it. It was also my way of dealing with guys, you know, trying to make passes or, you know, mm -hmm. just being funny. It turns off people. Yeah. It really does. So if you want, I mean, it can either turn them on if they're in your life, like my husband. Sometimes he still doesn't understand my sarcasm. I'm like, I'm being sarcastic. Uh -huh. um, that, I dealt with all of those things through humor. Absolutely. That was, that was my way. I love and, that. That's mm -hmm. the, that was your way to deal with all this BS. Uh, and you started with pageants, right? You were um, Miss Luciana. And, and let me put you up here. Let's see. Let me go to the I'm the producer here. So it's a one woman show. So let me see where. No, it's this one. I don't know how to do this. That's OK. <laughs> I, that's how we shoot our models now is headless. <laughs> <laughs> Back there. So, oh, my God, I did it last. I was, Miss, I was Miss Louisiana for three different pageants. And um, yes. my mother just wanted me to be Miss Louisiana for the Miss America pageant. She wanted me to, that that's the one that has the talent. And yes. I never won that. So when I went out to LA, she's like, okay, now you have to be Miss California so you can go to the Miss America pageant. So I got back into all that. I was done with it when I hit LA. Um, I was done with it by the time I was 19, 18 or 19 in, in New Orleans and Louisiana. But so when I moved to LA at 22, 23, I was, then I was, would have been one of the older pageant girls, but I got back into it. I won Miss Hollywood and I won Miss Press Club. And some of those pageant, those pageants actually helped me meet yeah. people, like, you know, some agents. So it, it was, there was some good and bad, you know, I mean, when, I mean, I moved to LA and maybe you were similar. I didn't know anyone. I, I had no relations there. It was the only thing I did was I got some friends to move out with me. I was too, my parents were too Good. strict. They were nervous about me being there alone. And um, I had never gone away to school or anything. So, mm -hmm. or lived in a dorm even. So they were like, so I, I actually got, I got three women, girls to move out with me, which was crazy. And then they fell off, you know, a couple of them stayed of longer, but they, they fell off. And then, you know, then my parents put me in a nice apartment and made sure that I was safe and, I went there for six months and never and stayed 26 years until I married. Oh, wow. And you started, like you said, with no relationships in the business. And that is so hard because in this industry, 
It's all about relationships. It's so all you started, I mean, I just like. <laughs> but you know what, Grace? I am. I'm really a different bird that people probably are, would be completely shocked to know. I am completely shy. So a lot of times I should have pushed myself to go to parties and events just to meet people. And mm -hmm. I actually didn't do that well. I could stand in front of 5,000 people. I can stand in front of a live event. I can talk with that microphone. It's like a big mask for me. And I have no fear of being in front of an audience live anywhere. But you put me into a party one-on-one. -on -one. If I walk into a party, I will sit down. I'm not one, you know, people work the wrong. I'm not good at that. I just am so shy. I'm actually, it's a, it's an insecure thing. And I've never gotten over that. I'm still, I mean, I host these big parties, not now, obviously, but at my house, we've had charity events and I'll go upstairs and hang out for a while. Um, yeah. Bands work in the room. I'm, I, it's, and people go, really? How can you be shy? And yeah, I, I totally I, get it, Rhonda. I totally get it. As a child, I was super shy. It's so funny. But, so you know, I think, I think a lot of comics are. I mean, I don't have problems with doing, I know a lot of comics have, um, problems doing interviews like this because if they don't have set material, they're not they're not comfortable with it. But I'm yeah. I'm fine with that. That's never bothered me. I what's bothered me is just one on one meeting new people for the first time. I'm more shy. Yet I can push myself to to do certain things if I put my guard on and pretend like there's a mic in front of me and I can go for it. But um, but being shy probably mm -hmm. hurt me in LA. So I had you know some boyfriends, a couple of boyfriends along the way, and I think I, I hid behind them as my Shield. So I'd always say, I have a boyfriend. I have a boyfriend. I love that. Yes. And, um, and I mean, I did care for these guys, obviously. And I, when I was in love, you know, but, but I knew I wasn't going to get married to those people. So it kind of, I didn't use them, but I it used it as my shield, as my guard for. I totally get it. Yeah. Because guys were, they were kind of slimy back then. They did say, yeah. that. they did. I mean, I, I think it's, it has to have gotten better with people, you know, being going to jail. Um, yeah, after the Me Too, yes, it got, it's got better. But before you, like the messages, I've got a whole thing about that. Like the messages that guys would send you on dating apps, you're like, I don't even know what. Oh my gosh, I, I know, it's so forward. So yeah, you've been there long enough that you would have seen the before, you would have yeah. seen the transition between the before, before Harvey and after. And after <laughs> yeah, it's a whole different world. <laughs> I mean, I had this one guy, he was a, he was a big manager. I mean, he managed a Liz, Linda Evans, like those kind of women from wow. that era. And, um, um, he said, he would call my parents and say, if Rhonda, you know, what's me, I can make her a star. He would say that to my parents. I mean, and, but so I I'd go out to dinner with him every now and then. And he was just like, He'd eat and food would fall out of his mouth on he, he, but you know what I like that didn't care because they held the they had the power then. And then one time he uh he literally said to me, I will black I will have you blackballed in this city. Oh my god. I, I what the, why he was mad at me. I mean, I never did anything. I was really a good girl. I was sweet. But no, I, I can like, tell. And you'll never work again. Of course, you know, that's yeah. Not an it easy didn't happen. Yeah, but I, but did couple, I did have a couple of things that that I think did hurt my career. Where people really like, you mean like, people were talking like about Henry, you? Like, that, Henry, like Henry Winkler? Is that in my book? Did I put the Henry Winkler story? I think you did. Yes. I um, mean, I know people love him, and nobody has anything bad to say about him. But I had a horrible experience with him. Uh, so I don't mind talking if you want to talk about it. No, go ahead. I mean, this is yeah because. The, People need to know what women go through with and it wasn't, it men. Wasn't even, it wasn't even that, but but it was just as evil. So um, I got my dream was to be on Happy Days when I when I was Miss Louisiana. I went out to L.A. Um, at, for a gig and ended up auditioning for Happy Days. Like long story mm -hmm. short, and I didn't get it, but that was on my mind. It was at the height of Happy Days, and my parents said, "You're not going back to LA until you graduate." So it, it took me like three. It was like I was a freshman when that happened. Anyway, so long story short, I get out to LA. One of the first things I get is a Happy Days, and mm -hmm. then they started using me without auditioning me. They started to get to know me. So like that was on my third Happy Days, and they would just call me in for small roles. But you know, they had like a stable of women they would use because they always had like babes and girls and girlfriends on the show of the guys. So, so one show I get cast as Henry Winkler's girlfriend, not a lot of lines, but they just called me for it. So mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh my God, that's great. So I go into the rehearsal, like they start on Monday and then they have a table read the whole week. And then on Thursday they, they rehearse and then Friday they would take. 
Well, you know, as a young performer, getting a television commercial is residuals. Yeah. And I got a, a Church's Fried Chicken commercial that same week. So I went to the producers of the show, which was Jerry Paris. And I went to everybody, the casting director. And I said, it shoots Thursday. And I, and I, we've already rehearsed it. And I'm basically, I just have making out scenes with Henry and I'm just kind of clinging on to him the whole show. What do you think? Is there any way I can do this commercial? And they said, oh, absolutely. I mean, we know you, we love you, go do it. I would never have done something that, like that without getting someone's permission from the, from the top, top, top. Mm -hmm. So I go back in on Friday with my little, you know, my little bag into my, you know, my makeup room was already there with my name on it, but there was no makeup with room with my name on it on Friday. There was another woman's name on it. And I was Ooh. like, so I'm walking around the set. I couldn't for a few minutes. I couldn't find anybody. I got there kind of early that could help me. I mm -hmm. found my, um, backstage. I don't know who it was, but it's too many years, but he said, well, Henry Winkler wants to talk to you in his dressing room. And I'm like, Okay, so I go into, okay, I'm gonna put her down because she's getting fidgety. Oh. I go into Henry's dressing room and he sits me down and he goes, I had you fired. And I'm like, uh, uh. he goes, I, I'm gonna teach you a lesson that was taught to me in college. And immediately I started thinking, but this is in college, this is real life. Right. And, and I go, well, I got this commercial, I'm bawling already. I got this commercial and residuals mean a lot. He goes, if you want to take acting seriously, if you want to take it seriously, you never leave a job. You never do that. And I'm not saying that he was wrong, but he could have done the same thing in his dressing room and kept me on the show. But yeah. when someone stood in me for me that day and he made her set screen actress guilt right away and made the stand in, you know, um, you know, a girl it was just I guess she stood in for various people on the show and he literally gave her the role and that's what it was that easy of a role because it was just like one line um but he yelled at me and said the same I did something similar in college and I got thrown out of the play and I and the whole time I was thinking okay so at the moment I mean as as a young girl of 23 24 it yeah. killed me but what it did was way worse because they were doing Mark and Mindy, they were doing Laverne and Shirley, they were doing a million other sitcoms. I was never cast in any of those shows ever, ever, ever. Like I was reading for those shows. So yeah. literally he did end up getting me blackballed. And that's when I was starting to really get that momentum going. And I and my dream was to do a sitcom so desperately. So I really think it took me years later to figure it out. And so this is kind of funny, you'll love this. So I talk about the book, so I guess some, you know, somebody local uh, from the Business Journal read the book, and they they brought up the Henry Winkler story, and they said, "Is it okay if we get in touch with Henry?" I went, "I would love you to get in touch with Henry." I don't know if you yeah. remember it, so they got in touch with him, and he's like, his publicist, he told his publicist to say he would never fire anyone. That's not him. Well, he didn't personally fire me; he had me fired. So you know, he 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 denied the whole thing. But do you feel it was like a power trip? It sounds like all these things happened because men felt powerful. Well, he was at the top. It was like the year before our happy days went off the air. And then I had a similar thing. And he changed though. He really humbled Eric Estrada on chips. I had a really not, it wasn't so bad towards me, although I had kissing scenes with him and he was whispering things in my ear that were totally inappropriate. <laughs> but oh my God. What he wanted to do, and I was like, so we were out on a bar. Oh my god! We were at a barge in the Pacific Ocean, and it was the first day of shooting. It was the first show of the season, and yeah. it, it might have been the last, the last season. But anyway, so he gets on the, a bullhorn, and he said, and and this is to the entire cast and crew because those shows aren't like sitcoms; they don't shoot in front of people. They, you know, they shoot like a film, like a like a mini film. And he yeah. gets on the bullhorn, and he goes. I just want you all to know that you're all here because of me, Eric Estrada, you're all here because of me. And I can have any one of you fired. And he's talking to the producer, the director, the ca every, not the casting person, but all the cast. And we were all, I mean, you know, you're young and you're shaking. And I'm like, and I, and, and he had already said inappropriate things in my ears. And I was working with a, a gal, a girl on the show. We, we, we were like best friends on the show. And I kept just getting closer to her. I'm like, maybe if we act like we're together really in life, <laughs> he'll leave us alone. But I mean, it was, it was definitely a power trip. But you know, after yeah. that, I, I never worked on the show again or worked with him um, in any television, but I saw him at a lot of events and he literally, I don't know what, something happened in his life that changed his personality and he humbled after that. But yeah, but wow. men were in charge, men were tough. I mean, I've heard this about some female stars, you know, mm -hmm. um, 
like I, I had a, um, uh, I'm just telling you, because I think actors will like some of these stories. Um, I was yeah. on Heart to Heart one season and I had lines with Stephanie, yeah, Stephanie Powers, Stephanie Powers, yeah. yeah. And, um, and Robert Wagner. And so Robert Wagner was really sweet. And so I had, I, mean, I was just like, I don't know if I was a flight attendant, but you know, something, something on a boat, like a flight attendant, but on a boat. But anyway, um, <laughs> so I had lines with Stephanie and Robert. So he stayed, it was like the end of the day they shot, you know, when they turn around the camera. So it's your close up. That's how, yeah. you know, they shoot, you know, they, the, the overall scene and then they do everyone's close up. So if you're a really giving actor, you're going to stay there and help the other actor by reading your or by giving them your lines anyway. Uh, Robert yeah. Wagner stayed there and he did his lines with me. Mm -hmm. Stephanie Powers like, I'm off for the weekend. I'm off. And I mean, right. so the script supervisor read the lines with me and it's never the same as the actress, you know, it's just Absolutely. like, it's like in a reading when they read like this and you're supposed to, I mean, for me, I was never, never really as good as I, I felt like I could, like I could be now in, in, in co-readings. But um, anyways, that's the only thing. She wasn't mean. It's just like, you know, I'm just mm -hmm. an actress. My, you know, my lines yeah. Anything to her? Not nice. I mean, that's not very nice. Yeah. But the yeah. only thing, the only thing that was the, the worst thing in terms of actors was the Henry Winkler situation. That was just ah, uh, because it really, I really feel like it, it blackballed me from you know all the shows that there was a casting director named Bobby Hoffman, and he cast all those shows, and he was just a wonderful guy. And until he never called me again, now until I was thirty, which is a few, quite a few years later for a soap opera and then he called me for other parts once happy days was gone and basically those mm -hmm. shows were over and i was like so sad all the shows he would have called me on during those years and he couldn't oh kind of a bummer i mean just some of the, really? some of the other stuff i don't know how hollywood is today i mean it's a different world with everybody i had an audition a few months ago a couple of months ago and i sent it on tape and i've had a blast doing it that my yeah. agent god i mean i don't know i wouldn't have flown because i would have been too afraid of covid but i just wanted to audition I, didn't get a call back, but I thought it was kind of cool that you can audition now, like yeah. the, like you just send your stuff in. Well, audition is, is kind of like a mini acting class, you know, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's how I take it. It's like, I don't yeah, care yeah. what the outcome is. I'm not married to it. Well, um, the cool thing is you can actually prepare for it. You know, when you read it, you know, you can actually do it, take a few takes mm -hmm. before you send it to them. So, you, you know, you do get that warm up in where, where when you just go in and read Cole in front of, and you have this cast yeah. director who's, who's looking down or not even ever looking up at you. It, it's an intimidating business. I, I commend you. I commend myself for being there for 26 yes. years of it. It's amazing. Nice. Amazing. We have some questions from yes. uh, Dave right here. He's asking, uh, Grace, please ask Rhonda about her experiences working on Dallas, Happy Days, The Dukes of Hazard, and Three's Company. <laughs> Well, they were all, the Dukes of Hazard was fun. I played Flossie. I don't know why I remember that. Three's Company was a blast. That that was just, you know, they were all the similar roles. Um, happy Days, it, my other Happy Days roles were great. I met Cassandra Peterson on the first one. She's Elvira. Um, so that was kind of fun that I met her on the very first episode that I did and got to know some of the cast members. Like I just had, I had Donnie Most on here, Ralph Mouth, um, in, in one of my first, not on here, not on your show, but on my own show. Yeah. My show, we're in the same place. But I have, a, you know, I have a show called Rhonda's Your Social Hour, and I yeah. have. We're going to talk about that for sure. But, but I had him on, so it's like kind of fun to go back into your past and revisit. But all of those shows were great experiences for me. I loved every second of it. I really, truly did. I love it. Well, here is your book. I don't know why the other picture is up. <laughs> oh, that's okay, I like it. Let's just keep it like an artistic background of you being oh, in the listen, You're doing great. I mean, I've got producers here and sometimes this, these, these streaming sites are, they're fabulous, but they're tough. They're a little tough because I've never, I, I just started doing like sharing pictures great. and videos and stuff. So, Hey, you know, it's part of the show. But no, I the book. The show. <laughs> you make it part of the show. What are you going to do? It's like stand up, right? Absolutely. So here is Up All Night. Everybody, you guys out there, you should read this book. It's hilarious, full of advice, by the way. Yeah. Rhonda, you're very wise. I love that. From Hollywood bombshell to lingerie mogul, life lessons from an accidental feminist. I love that. Yeah. And, and it's true. I mean, kind of everything I've told you, like what you do is you just, you navigate your way, just like you. Like, I, I mean, I know you through my niece. I feel like you and I are kind of related. I know we are. I know. I know. Well, your niece almost became my daughter. <laughs> so, 
That's <laughs> wild. Listen, that is my, my ex brother in law was a very special guy, and yeah. I bet you no one laughed louder in the audience than him uh, when he I went know. performed. <laughs> I know he was so fun. The best that's laugh. I, I have a history of older Jewish men. I just, just, so my <laughs> by the way, Grace, I always dated older men. My husband is the yes. youngest guy. At, I mean, I ended up marrying someone a year and a half older. No, is yeah, it was a year, about a year, a year and a month. I don't know. We're the closest in age to anyone I ever dated. Like, nice. I dated much older guys. I don't know. I, don't, I just felt safer with them. And they were nice for the most yes. part. They really yeah. were nice. They were respectful. Um, yeah. You know, Absolutely. They, they treated you great. They they would take you to nice dinners. You know, yeah. <laughs> keep you around. It's like how much money? You know, do I? I need to put money. And I say you have a joke in your book about that. You say they're like parking meters. I love that. Yeah, it's more like parking meters. How much? Wait, see, you, you might remember my joke more. Uh, you're thinking, yeah, they're. I can't remember. Like, right? I how much more money do I have to put in until it expires? <laughs> and then the girl is like, "What? I can't remember what the girl says, but it was funny." So true, though it's so true. But I, I, I loved it, and, and they were, and then I had a lot of older men as friends, like just as like long term mm -hmm. friends, and they would come visit me on site. You know, so so they were great. I mean, I, I don't, I, I love that. I, I can't imagine going the other way. I dated a guy one time that was four years younger than me. He was like the last guy I dated right before I met up with Van. And he was like a Richard Gere lookalike, very, very, nice. cute, very sassy. And I thought he was really sexy. And then one time when we got, well, we got in a fight, I think. Yeah. <laughs> when I called him up after Christmas one year in 2020 and said, oh, by the way, I'm married. We, I mean, we weren't going to say, whoops, I just got <laughs> went away. I was mad at you and I went away and couple of weeks later, I'm married. Um, but he, I mean, he started like putting down my age, you know, like calling me old, you know, I don't, I, I, I would not feel comfortable dating someone younger. I know, I know these, some of these yeah. actors, really younger guys. I just, cause you know, women age differently than men. I don't know. Yes. I mean, but we're you know, with guys now, for some reason, I don't know why they're looking for older women. Like I have guys in their twenties. that I I'm like, why are you chasing me? But it's true. I, I mean, even I, you know, you know, the, the coolest thing about having this show, this streaming show for me, my show, is that I have reconnected with my fan base from Up All Night. Like, I love it. Uh, up All Night. If I don't say it that way, I, people get upset. <laughs> You're like, really cheating your audience. Yeah. <laughs> they get really upset. Like, I have reconnected with this fan base tremendously and a lot of horror film um, lovers and, uh, and just that whole genre. So I'm really, really excited that, you know, I love doing this. It's, I started it in the beginning. I was just talking to people by myself because I was so depressed over the whole, you know, quarantine in the very beginning. Oh my God. And I said, let me see if I can reach out to some friends. And then it just became, you know, a thing. And I really love it. I, I you know, I'm not going to stop it. I really enjoy it. And I think people, the whole streaming thing and the YouTube, you know, we, the, we, it streams live. And I guess you could do this too. And maybe you do it. We're on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. And then we have a web page that it that it all it's airing live the whole you know the whole time on the web page so they can watch it. Here's your Rhonda Shear social hour. I was on it and it's super fun. You guys need to watch it. And it's every Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And so it would be 6 p.m. our time, right? Right. And then yeah. you know, and if you'd miss it, you can go back like to, to well, obviously on YouTube, you can see any of the older shows. But also, you can go to RondaShearSocialHour.com, and all the shows are up. Plus, we are selling. I have to say this because you know it's always about sales. We're selling yes. up all night masks. <laughs> I love that. I have actually a picture of that. See, I'm doing I'm doing pretty well with the pictures. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> and I'm trying not to look. I'm trying to be like. No, okay. you're doing <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, they are. Oh, thank you. You're really good. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> you so know, here they are. I love this one with you, like the your shape there. That's awesome. So we kind of, you know, didn't take exactly my shape, but maybe an older shape and kind of reshaped it. But um, here's okay. the one. You can buy one, two, or four. That's how you. That's how, and you can go to rondashear.com or either rondashearsocialhour.com, and they're really good. They're really they're cotton lined and and. When I put them up, I didn't realize how popular they would be. People have, or I'm even having some of my, we'll send you some, Grace. They're really good. Oh, thank you. The, the girl on it's just so sassy and cute. <laughs> I love it. No, they're great. Awesome. You're, 
an entrepreneur and that's uh i admire you just like you've done it all you know you just like is there anything you haven't done you have an incredible line of intimates which actually thank you for sending me uh i love your line it is so cool and you take i'm gonna show him while i'm talking i'm like i'm doing the picture here like i'm not doing anything um let's see here i'm gonna show the picture here where i love that you have women of all shapes uh, and yeah, absolutely oh my gosh as a matter of fact thank you what we just launched um literally last week last mm -hmm. Friday, i had today's special on home shopping network it's like the sale it's like a 24-hour sale and we just launched what we're calling our our well instead of calling nudes because nude was always traditionally like a beige color there are, there are new body colors. So literally every everybody has their own nude. So we launched from a very light, pale, like beige, all the way to a very dark chocolate. And so we have five different colors. And I love doing that because I've been wanting to do that. I mean, everybody needs to be inclusive. And so we're doing more of that. And we're also using models of all shapes and sizes and ages. So yes, I love that. Doing. There's oh, another... And, and you know what makes me happy that I've seen change, you know, because I was always fighting with, yeah, boy, girl, you got it going. <laughs> well, <laughs> and I can do it. I figured out what I was doing wrong before. So good. Oh, We're doing good. Yeah, we just shot that the other day. And, and there, there, she was our fairest girl to our darkest girl. Um, and then we're going to, we actually, we have five colors right now. We're going to add two more. We're going to get a little darker even, and we're going to get a little kind of a mid color we need, but I love doing this. And I, you know, our line goes up to three X right now and we're going to take it up to five X. So, you know, extra small through five X. So, wow. you know, I have loved and seen through the years, just like you've seen before Harvey and after Harvey. I'm <laughs> saying, when I was in LA, you know, obviously, you know, I was just young. So I stayed then, you know, it was, it wasn't hard as hard as mm -hmm. now, because Van and I love to eat, cook and all that. But um, I've always been curvy, even at uh, every size I've been curvy. Yes. Told you're too curvy. I know, I was gonna ask you that because oh, you are oh, gorgeous, absolutely freaking gorgeous. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was just like my mouth. Was oh my God. Somebody's calling me. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm doing my job. That. That's live TV. Live TV. Yeah, I love it. Totally. They just called me. Uh, That's awesome. They're like, what's going on? Yeah, um, I know. Like, I, I'm looking at, I'm watching your show. I'm like, uh, yeah, don't call. Oh um, my gosh. But yeah, I've seen, I've, seen, I've seen changes. Like finally women bodies mm -hmm. image is okay for women to be themselves. Yes. Not, I mean, and this is just recent. So like if you go to yeah. Instagram, there's pages with girls that, I mean, there's, they're, they're really big curvy women. I mean, they're, I love that. they're, they're great. Women. And, and I love it. They're in bikinis. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, and right. I'm like, go girl. I mean, because you know, yes. we go to Italy and you see all shapes, sizes and ages on the beach and bikini. Yep. I'm like, yeah. And they don't care. It's like, it's here. See, I always say with the mind control to think this is sexy. This is not sexy. This is beautiful. This is not beautiful. So, and beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. And all bodies are beautiful. Nice. I don't care all what they All bodies are beautiful. We say beauty mm -hmm. comes in all shapes, all sizes. And I am so happy about that. I, I'm happy Me to see too. that in my line. And I'm happy that HSN, you know, we've done up to 5X before, but now they're, now we're, we're starting to really, so we'll have all these new, you know, skin tone colors, we're calling them. And then we'll have, you know, new size ranges. So that makes me just so happy. Mm -hmm. That everybody, because I know just for me being yeah. large busted, I could never find my own size right now in a store. Oh just, my God, totally. I know. I know. It's like I throw tops and it's like ridiculous. I know. I know. And I'm also curvy, you know. I mean, you know, it's it's just, and it this is, is my, my body. It's like, don't tell me, you know, that I'm this or that. This is why. Oh, right. You're so beautiful and you have such a beautiful <laughs> figure. And the thing is, curves are in. And I'm so Thank glad you. that they are in again and bit. Big butts are fabulous. <laughs> I know. And I'm gonna quote, I'm gonna quote you because I love this quote. Behind every woman is a great behind. It's true. It's, it's true. true. I'm not drawn down. <laughs> so true. I mean, thank goodness the Kardashians, they really took it yeah. off that off the chart. They I mean, bought. I used to let you look, and this is probably in my book too, but um I I, I used to be, I mean, I never had like well, I, mean, I had an ample derriere, but not like the Kardashian derriere. But anyway, they weren't in. Boobs were in like in those years, but yeah. butts weren't. 
as much. I mean, curvy, but not mm, anyway. I I remember I would go into auditions and I would walk in and I'd kind of back out of a room. I never wanted to turn around. Oh, how funny! <laughs> I'd be like, okay, nice. It's probably why they always thought, you know, it's like, is this girl ever leaving? I'm like backing out. <laughs> That's adorable. See, you are shy. I am. I You're so shy. I am. Um, I am. And, and one thing I loved about the book too, uh, you empower women, you empowered yourself, and now you're empowering other people, men and women. You know, it's like, do you just, I love I what love you do. I love helping entrepreneurs. And I love what you do, Grace, because you've you've had showcases where you've put women comics on. Yes. And you, and you told me right before we went on that it's really it's still hard for women to get to the stage. Well, when I first started, it was it was impossible. I mean, they would make fun of you. And especially I was trying just to look myself and, mm -hmm. and not a sexier route, but apparently I have my mouth moves sexy. And I, oh can't. God, I, can't. I, I don't, what is, what does that mean? I don't know. I, I have no idea. I have no idea any of it, but, you know, but whatever, you know, so, but I was just trying to be myself and not play it down. Like a lot of comics, when they start, they, they, they pull mm -hmm. their hair back, they wear more makeup. And I didn't want to do yeah. that. I just wanted to go for me. The image I was, you know, so the, the, the club owners didn't take it seriously, but you know, I sat there every week and I would sit in front of the laugh factory and wait for those five minutes and then wait and wait. And then eventually, you know, I got on, but before then I started, I knocked on all kinds of a delicatessen in the, um, in Westwood. I can't remember the name of it anymore, but we got them to open up a room. So on Monday nights we would do all girls comedy. And then we did a, then I had an all women night at the laugh factory, uh, Jamie Masada when it was just, I this love it. The laugh factory was this big before it was this mega company. And I have to say, he gave me a break and it was great. So, and, and then it let so many other, you know, I had so many other comics, female comics, because they just couldn't get on stage. So you right. do the same thing. And I think that's yeah. freaking awesome. Because how many people Thank do that? You. There's a lot of jealousy too. You know, they, I mean, women help each other, but then there's a lot of, yeah. if somebody starts climbing up, they get a little nervous. You know, there's I absolutely, and you know what? I'm usually happy for other people when they succeed because it actually gives me hope. <laughs> you absolutely. know, absolutely. you know, I'm happy for them, and it's it's good vibes to send. It's always good to send good vibes up there. Don't you know jealousy and negativity and all that? It's just eventually it hurts you. Well, no, first of all, this is my theory on that completely, and, and mm -hmm. on business and in comedy, acting, what or anything in life, cream rises to the crop to the top yeah. if you yeah. keep working at it and you you mm -hmm. you you focus in on whatever mm -hmm. you're doing and don't look to left or right because you can't be that other girl you can't be that guy just do your own thing and if you're good you're gonna make it you're gonna you, you will make it at you know and yep. i even though i had those downfalls you know i know i sound like i'm mm -hmm. the henry winkler thing i still worked and i still i was a working actress from the time I got to LA to the time I left, because like you, I treated it like a business and I worked at it every day. So I never just like hung around in the house eating like eating bonbons. I think my brothers thought that they were like oh, right. Hollywood. You're just like sitting out there thinking you're. Oh, yeah. they have no idea. They have no idea what we go through. Did you do like the odd jobs? Oh, <laughs> we my, gosh. Right? oh my gosh, I did. Yeah. Well, one time I I I, I took a I took a job at a studio for a producer because I thought he'd cast me, you know, of course he, he dangled that. He wasn't like coming on to me like that, but oh, good, good. like that. But I, I basically, <laughs> I had to open his mail. I had to, I had, to, I, I had to run errands for him. I had to go and get dog toys for his wife because the dog went through like five toys a week. So that was like my job for him. And then that was one weird job. And then there was, a show, called, there was a show called real people. And none of this is in the book. I, I forgot about it till now. There was a show called Real People, and it was the starting of kind of like reality shows. And they these people would tell their sob stories, and they would go on, and you know they would just I don't know, give make their lives better. I I I was in the mailroom, and I had to read these thousands of these stories. You you oh my god, you just want to kill yourself. These stories were so heart wrenching, and then you, you'd put the ones that you thought had you know some special that would make a good tv show so i did that that was odd then i did singing telegrams so no. that was my and i don't sing that's the one thing i don't so i did this honey bunny and i sang but i wanted to pay for pictures to shoot with harry langdon who still shoots by the way he's like his father was a famous producer he's got his, his father was a famous director his stars on you know a walk on the walk of fame harry was like 
shot every every major. If you look at Perry Langdon, every major star from the '80s and the '90s and even into the 2000s, and he's still shooting. So I, it was five thousand back then. Well, it's, even now, that's a lot of money. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah. But back then, that was like a million dollars, and yeah. I worked all summer and saved up so I could shoot. And I did. I shot with Harry. You know, I, I got my photographs. So that I had those kind of you know goals, but my sister, this who was Bridget's mother, ended yeah. up your yeah. ex, ex-wife. So confusing. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> she ended up. She ended up owning um, because she saw what I was doing, and I was making a lot of money. Not a lot, but I mean good money on the side right. uh, for doing singing telegrams. I made. I did so well that she goes, I should open up a singing telegram company in New Orleans, and she did. Nice. And from that era when it was like huge. Yeah. She did so well. I think she bought a house on it. I mean, she did. Oh my God. Kicked butt with it. I mean, it was called Hotlines. And nice. uh, she, had, she had fun doing it too, because it was creative and she would drive some of the acts to, to their, you know, to these you know, different homes. And she, I mean, she has funny, funny stories about the acts and hiring the acts and, you know, but anyway, that was, that was one of my crazier jobs. And then here's the one, here's the, the one I made the most money at, I would do conventions, you know, the girls yeah. that stand at the booths. So yeah, I would- I've uh, done that before. Oh yeah, <laughs> so I would do mime. So I would stand there like a- <laughs> which I, I was taught in New Orleans. It was a Dale, Gail Del Corral modeling agency. Oh my God, that was my agent. They, oh my Dale God. Del Corral, yes. Okay, well, Gail, back in the day taught, is she alive? She, I don't even know. She, she I don't know. Mom. She sold it to somebody. Yeah. I don't well, okay. So back in the day, she taught modeling. Like, oh, like I took a, her classes. Plus, I like modeling. Yes. <laughs> and she taught the mannequin. So I use it. Oh, so I would do this at a convention and hand them the bags. You know, yeah. like here's the bag to put your stuff in. So I did that for ever. It would kill. Oh my God. It was so hard. You'd stand on your feet for like hours on the yeah, that was That was really hard for real. Right. And then I did some, I did a lot of modeling. I somehow mm -hmm. lied about my height because I'm only five, three. And I would say I was five, six, five, seven. And I got a lot of swimsuit. I mean, leg nice. legit, legitimate stuff. <laughs> Who cares? You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so I did, uh, you know, whatever I could do, anything. And then I also worked a ton of stuff, and I'm sure you know this too, the charity events, and wherever I could get on to perform. I did so much yeah. of that for free, and I have no regret doing it. I I met some incredible people doing that. Yes. So wherever I could get on, I could, I, I would, and, but every night I treated it, or every day, it was never, mm -hmm. when I had to stand up, it became more of a night thing, obviously, but in the day, you know, you, back then you'd make your tapes, and you'd send them out, and I mean, every day I would have I spent more money on getting videotapes, three half inch tapes made, sending them out, sending them out, sending them out. I mean, it's just, and then wait a minute, this is kind of interesting. You'll like this. This is kind of, I think it might be my book too, but I know whoever hasn't read it. So I had a comedy partner named Kenny Ellis and we were in Harvey Lembeck's class and his, his daughter still teaches. And it's like the best improv class. If you can ever take an improv class, Grace, even though you're doing stand up, it is just, there's nothing like it. And I'm sure that I'm sure her class is every bit as good as her dad's, but he was the man. He was like the guy. So, I mean, I met Robin Williams came out of there like amazing people. Wow. Um, so, um, but I, I had, I met this guy in the class and I, he was so talented. His name was Kenny Ellis. And I said, you got to be my comedy partner. We're going to do stuff together. I wasn't too shy, to, but he was my age. So I wasn't shy to and he's like, okay. I handed him. A, I had a business card. It was like Rhonda Shear actress. He goes, I've never had an actress hand me a business card. But anyway, we got together. We did some scenes, and so he has this voice like an angel. And I was doing the mannequin thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> where I would dress in an all nude body stocking, all nude, <laughs> card, and I'd put a bald cap on. And he would carry me and deliver. We would crash offices. We crashed Johnny Carson. We crashed all the talk show offices. He would go, I have a delivery. And we got it everywhere we, cra everywhere we crashed. Only a couple of places I think we were thrown out of. And then oh, he would put me down. And then he would start to sing to me. And and he would dr not dress me, but, you know, I, I, he put the wig on. And then I put my clothes on. And it was this cute little duet like kind of like oh, i don't know chills and arnell but um we ended up steve allen god bless him back in the day he we crashed a rehearsal of his and he said you're on my sixth show i love you guys i love what you do he was like a comics comic yeah god, 
they canceled it on five. Oh man, no. And I had a lot of stuff like that, but he was always sweet. We got, I got to know him. I have to say some of the coolest things I ever did was working. I got to work with it. My dream was George Burns, Johnny oh, Carson, nice. Bob Hope, Steve Allen. Um, so just to say, you know, if you love comedy that you got to even work with those greats was just amazing. amazing. Yeah. It's almost like, I always feel like, you know, like what we do is so amazing that if I die today, I'm like, I've lived my life the way I wanted to live it. And I have no regrets. You feel that? I have no regrets either. None. No. I, I mean, I don't look back and say, you know, because life does, you have to follow the roads. You, you know, as my yes. husband and I moved to Florida for HSN and, you know, we didn't know how it would work out. I'll tell you one one last story. I know I'm just jumping all over you tonight. No, I love it. Like, where did you, this is the Green Room Edition. This is like a Green Room chat. Yeah, and I love it. It's a great name. It is. With me trying that, to show pictures and screwing up. That's all it yeah, is. No, yeah. that's. That's so cool. Um, one of the coolest things, you know, I always always see Jay Leno at the improv because he would come in and he'd hang out at Bud Friedman's table or he would do a set and, you know, and I knew it. So I knew him. I mean, it's just like all the other, I mean, he, he knew my name. He was always great with names and always sweet. And I remember I got a new car and he complimented it and he was, it was a big deal. It was Jay Leno. This is before he got the Tonight Show. So um, of course, then he went on and got the Tonight Show. I never did any of that. And then I already had moved out here. So I don't, I mean, I know he got it when I was out there, but anyway, that just didn't happen then. Long story short, though, I won Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year for um, my opera and for just being an entrepreneur. This was back in 2012. Huge big deal. And so I went, so so that was for Florida. I won it, Ernst & Young for Florida. And then you go to the National. Well, I didn't win at the National, but I mean, you're... I was up against Chobani yogurt. Well, we know how good Choba how big Chobani yogurt has gotten. So, I mean, I had some stiff competition, but it was still really, I mean, an honor. It was something I never expected. I never thought I'd be up for, you know, of course my husband too, but my name is on, on it. So I'm yeah. the one who got the who gets the kudos. But anyway, long story short, uh, the national was hosted. He's been hosting it for years, Jay Leno. So he's hosting it and I was there. And so I wanted to say hello to him because it had been so many years. So I know where to find a comic and it's always in, in the back. You have to go through the kitchen. So it is at this big hotel in Orlando and I told my husband, I'll be back. I'm going to go say hello to Jay because I know he's backstage while they're showing these videos of all these entrepreneurs. He goes, where are you going? I go, I'm going through the kitchen and I'm going to get there. So I just, no one says a thing to me because it's not a comedy show. You know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's all entrepreneurs in the audience. Yeah. I trace back there. He's he's getting prepared. And I'm like, Jay. And he was nice, but he was getting ready to go back on. So he had to push me off a little bit. I didn't think anything of it. About a week later, he called me. And I'm in the grocery store and I'm shopping. And I get this phone call. And he was on the air. And it's from it's from NBC. And I'm like, I pick it up. He goes, Ron, it's Jay. I'm like, <laughs> He goes, I just wanted to say, I'm really sorry. I didn't get a chance to talk to you longer. I am so proud of you. I know what it takes to do what you're doing. And he just went on and on. And I was like, wow, that was really cool. That was a definitely a cool moment in my life to have, you know, and also, you know, to have appreciation from someone like that who he gets it, you know, he gets Absolutely. it. So, and also I'm standing in the grocery store and I want to tell this person in the aisle, I'm talking about you. <laughs> That's <laughs> business. If you're getting exciting news or whatever, I'm like, I want to call someone. I want to tell everyone. I know. I know. This isn't right. You know, you're hearing, you know, everybody clanging by him in the grocery store. It's so yeah, I don't care. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> just cool. Some of those, some, some of those moments, you know, they pay off because yes. you know, you're the young kid on the block and you don't think anybody's noticing you, but you got to keep going. You know, I can't imagine ever retiring. And my husband goes, don't you ever shut it down? Because we're right now we're getting ready to open a consignment store. Oh, wow. And I'm like, Why are we doing another business? And I'm like, because it's love that. and it's cool. And I love designer bags. And I've, I've gotten quite a few from consignment stores. And so wait, I, I met this couple that were really a unique couple that know that business. And a great building came up in an area that's really hot in our area. So we bought the building and it just kind of came together. And right. uh, my husband's like, he's like, oh, great. Now I'm redoing a building from scratch. But it's like, a, even if it's a consignment, which we know it's going to kick ass, but even if it yeah. didn't work out, it's this great building. Um, this couple is like, they're just amazing. So, I mean, we have these great designers. It's, it's called Retreat St. Pete. And you can actually go by on it now if anybody's listening. Um, I love it. 
Fendi's and Gucci's and furniture, and we ship all over. Oh, and really? I'm going to check it out. We haven't opened yet, but we're okay. going to open in November, but we're already online, and our website is fabulous. So I love it. So what's so the not, website again? It's called Retreat St. Pete. So R-E-T-R-E-A-T-S-T-P-E-T-E.com. Because we're in St. Petersburg, so they always call us St. Pete here. So it's 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 really going to be a really unique store. It's not going to be it's not like uh, Grandma's Attic. It's going to be really pretty. We're going to have things in all price ranges from five ten dollars up to like you know designer gorgeous designer Hermes bags and stuff. But it's it's unique. I'm excited about it because I like you know and it, it, you know, everything is about being sustainable. Well, you know, mm -hmm. if you can buy, I've been buying a lot of, because I'm all into sequins. Like when I'm on TV now, I wear sequins. And I love like, it. Nothing, nothing on the bottom, but sequins. <laughs> I know PJs. So I have have one one one. Now. <laughs> no, no one's wearing, no, everyone's got shorts on or something crazy or underwear. So I've been, but I've been getting a lot from consignment stores because yeah. no, everyone is selling, no one's going anywhere. So no one's selling their sequin tops. No one's. You know, no one, no one's, they're not making them. No one's buying them. So I'm getting great stuff on consignment. So I'm all about it. I'm not too proud to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to check your store at Retreat St. Pete. I love it. It's and we can, I want to talk about the juiciest thing um, at the end, and that's Playboy. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, juicy, juicy. So everybody yes. that was hanging there and listening, you got <laughs> the juicy part now. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, so you pose for Playboy and you have a lot of stories because I read your book and it's such an easy read and fun read. You guys need to get that book up all night. Thank you. And I, I mean, this is what I'm, I'm going to ask you. How was your experience doing the actual shoot? I mean, do you feel like quitting or are you embarrassed? Oh my gosh. Sexy yeah, well, or happy or what did you feel? Okay. So first time I posed with all my clothes on and that was in New Orleans, that was different. I, I ended up getting to know half, I just, it just fell in. I mean, it fell into place. Playboy was a big part of my life. So they were very nice and wrote about me through the years because I ended up running for public office in New Orleans because I was queen of this organization and they de-queened me when I was in Playboy with all my clothes on. So Playboy thought it was the funniest thing on the planet. So every time I'd get a part, Happy Days, whatever, they'd write about me in the back of the magazine. They just thought it was the funniest thing that I had my clothes on and then New Orleans is so stuffy that I would lose this title. So yeah. anyway. It was great. So I started this lifetime relationship with, with Playboy. So in 91, um, yeah, 91, right before I got up all night, um, well, it was probably, it was 1990. I had an idea. I was doing stand up, and I said, I am so tired of not being taken seriously as a comic. And so I said, I'm just going to shove it in their face. I'm going to go to Playboy. And I went to them and I said, I have an idea for a layout, women of comedy. And they were like, Wow, that's a really good idea. But of course, back in the day, they're like, you really think you're going to find women in comedy that are, you know, can be on the pages of Playboy? I mean, they were nice about it, but, you know, they were like, oh, wow. Said, okay, we'll do our own search. And I said, I've got some friends. I've got some friends and I think they'll do it. And I mean, I have a few friends that didn't, that didn't want to do it, but uh, Diana Jordan did. <laughs> and nice. she was awesome in it. And there were a couple of younger comics. Um, that, aren't, that didn't stick with it. But anyway, so we ended up doing it, long story short, and that was my first time being declothed. Because <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, women of comedy, you can be sexy to be pretty. I mean, you can be sexy or pretty, you can be anything and still be funny. That was my whole point. And yeah. Playboy was ready to do a show for the channel off of that too. So it was really gonna be this huge thing. So the first day of shooting though, pubic hair was still in style then. <laughs> <laughs> landing strips not the whole thing but anyway I can't. <laughs> so anyway i go out on the set and i'm dying because i'm shy i am shy i've never no. I'm shy much, but, so i go out and and i wasn't you know they had like a nightgown on me but they wanted to open it up and mm -hmm. you know open it but I, not open but i mean like <laughs> Because I already told them I wasn't going to do one of those, so they said no. 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 So anyway, I um, they they the now who's on the set? There's not a lot of people on the set. But they, the lighting guys they they light it and then they go away. So the girl, I mean, you have the 
um, I forget what it is, the head of photography, I forget what her name, the photo director. So she's out there and they take, back in the day, they were taking Polaroids and she's looking, she goes, you, you've got to go do something about the, the bottom. Wow. I have to do. So they send me, the makeup artist sends me into the bathroom by myself with some bleach. What? <laughs> oh my God, I'm in pain for you. And then I'm like, well, what do I do? Because I'd never dyed my own hair or anything. Like I'd always had it done. I was never good. Uh, with yeah. Doing it. So she's like, well, just brush it through or comb it through. And I'm like, okay, so I'm standing in this mirror and I'm in the bathroom by myself without any clothes. And I'm doing this. And she goes, wait a few minutes and it'll come up. The color wise, it'll start to lighten up because it's way different. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm looking at myself and I'm like, if I could flush myself down the toilet right now, I would. I want out of here so badly. I felt dirty. I felt cheap. I felt weird. I'm like, this is too strange. Yeah. Anyway, got a little lighter. <laughs> kind of a reddish tone. Oh and my God. I, I went back out and I did, and they actually, they're so, the photographers are so nice. There was like four or five and that's it. They never did Playboy. And they're so not sleazy at all. And so nice. they make you feel comfortable. So, and so actually yeah. that photo shoot or some of the prettiest one. I, then I ended up, then they came back to me when Up All Night came out, came out in 91. But in 92, they came back to me for a 93 edition. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, you know, off of Up All Night. And that one was more, they wanted it, half wanted it to be funny. It was a six page pictorial. Nice. It funny. So I did a lot of funny, I was in situations that were funny and I got really friendly with the, the first day of shooting. It was, it was the same thing. It was a nightmare. It was like, I was scared, but he was so, uh, Richard Fagley, he was so awesome and made me feel so good about myself. I guess these guys are just great. And the lighting people would light go away. So there was like just a couple of people on the set, but we were shooting like in a bowling alley. And so we're, I'm in a bowling alley and I'm doing this in my makeup artist. She's my dear friend. And she's so I'm like best friends with her. So I, I was fine with her. So she goes, do a split. That'll be sexy. And then she goes, and that way you'll be from the back. You'll just see the butt. You won't see anything else. I'm like, I like that. It's a good idea. So I'm doing a split and I look around and I see people bowling and I'm like, well, <laughs> if, if I can see them, can't they see me? I mean, I can see them because they had these tarps up, like these huge tarps. Yeah. And bowling alley was a working bowling alley. But anyway, um, the, it, the pictorial came out great. And now at right. like, when I look back at that, it's like, I'm glad I did it, you know, because there's nothing. Playboy did have put women on pedestals. It was never gross. If anybody was at the mansion, I mean, I was invited up there for the bigger parties and every now and then for a movie. I wasn't on the regular, regular list, but all the big parties I was on the list for. And if anybody got out of line with any woman there, they were thrown out immediately. So really nice. There was no hanky panky there. I mean, you could take phone numbers, but there, there was no, if somebody really came onto a girl and, a, and they were ugly, they were tossed out and that was it. They were, so guys were on their best behavior because they Good. were there. That's amazing. But so that was, I mean, I have no regrets doing that. And you look back and you know, you're a certain age and you're like, I can never repeat that picture again. So I'm glad yeah. I did it, you know, and it was good. And actually it didn't hurt me. And what it did was it, it upped my price in stand up because I was headlining then. And at that point between being on up all night and headlining mm -hmm. and signing plays boys at the end of the show, it was, it was good for, and I never had problems with anybody in the audience or women I'm maybe I'm just lucky or maybe it's because I was on a show at the time. I, I never had any nastiness nice. um, from audience yeah. members or anything. So, well, they felt your energy, you know, when you, when you're confident and you know what you're doing up on the stage, the audience feels that and they connect and they, with it and they know. And I was confident on the stage. Uh, like mm -hmm. I said, you're not, not so much off stage, but, but I mean, you know, there was those few years where I did really have a great, you know, up all night was flying. Playboy was out. I was doing a lot of other shows and everything was feeling, you know, just really nice. So it was great. Then after up all night, you know, it was kind of like, okay, now you're typecast. Now what? <laughs> so right. It was, it was tough. And then, then I met Van actually, you know, we, we, we reunited short, not too long, a couple of years after up all night was off the air. So. Um, I love that story. And you guys were high school sweethearts. Junior oh, high, 12 and 13. Oh, oh my God. That's, they yeah, give you he, hope. Took, he took my virginity and I've been <laughs> wow. it for it ever since. And um, no, it's really, it's a great story. It's a great love story. And it's great that we work oh. together and he's supportive of, of 
of everything I do. I still yell at him that you, you made me leave LA and we're in Florida. And he goes, Oh, you have a better life here. You're good. <laughs> you feel you have a better life in, well, my, I mean, you know, I, I tell him all the time, well, Grace, I would have been, well, first of all, you're still a baby, but if, if I would have stayed in LA, I would have, I would have gotten past the being typecast. I know I would have just time would have happened. And I would have been much like Lydia. I think that kind of personality that I would have kept pushing. So I think I would have worked whether or not I would have ever made it here. Yeah. I, know I, I know I would have stayed as a working actress. I, I know me. I, and I would have, you know, cause it, with age, you also get confidence and yes. certain thing, you know, if I had the, like, I would not be afraid to walk into a, an audition at this point, not that I'd be any better at it, but I yeah. would Great. But that just comes with time and age. So, so I definitely would have stayed at it. Not who knows what opportunities, but my, I mean, I love my life. I love doing the intimate apparel business for women. It's been really kind to us. My husband and I, it's been a good knock on wood. 18 years we've been doing it. Wow. And I love Florida and, and I have great friends here and we, we do a lot of charity events and we're involved in, in a lot of local charities and got great friends here and dogs and, you know, LA, I mean, if I would have stayed, I wouldn't have lost traction. But to me, it's yeah. so foreign to look how things are being done now because it's all the reality shows and everything, you know, has just changed everything so much to me. Yeah. Although in the 90s, when I was out there, you know, in the 90s, uh, my friend, he's the, he's the president of MGM now and I'm head of Unscripted and Reality. And he was this young producer. We were basically doing reality on the talk shows back then, these crazy bits and stuff. Which which turned into reality, but I don't love pure reality. I just because it's, yeah. it's not reality. It's not. Yeah. It's well, there's reality. a lot of scripted now, you know, with all the streaming services like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon, and there's so many uh, opportunities for you to create your own content. You don't even need to be in LA. I I I agree. I love this. I love that we can produce, direct, and write it whatever whatever we decide to do and we've been toying with a cooking show we've been playing with some other things and wherever it takes us at the very least grace i've been um doing hours and hours. hsn studios closed pretty quickly in february or march they, they shut down and i was really happy i did not want to go into the studio not we didn't know anything about this thing so we i was one of the first people guest or i'm also a vendor so we own our line but you know they have people that guest for different products that started Skyping. So all my shows, I have these today's specials, which are like these within 24 hours, you're on the air, like 10 hours. So I, it's so nice to be able to Skype from home. And, um, and right now they're, they're definitely shut down through the first of the year. They have no plans to go back, you know, oh. studio. I mean, they have their host in the studio and they have where well, they would normally have six models in the studio. And then of course mm -hmm. they have two models only. So I had a TS on Thursday today's special and I had one model at my house. Of course, we had her far away from me, but it was cool to have her here. And then we had two in the studio. And so it was kind of like a combination, you know, just, just, but you know, some of the people have gotten so creative on camera. I look at some of the other brands, I'm like, wow, HSN has got to love this because they're getting all these free, you know, kind of like these, these backgrounds. Some people have created incredible studios for themselves, you know, people in the makeup world. But I mean, I don't know if that's enhancing their business or not. I don't know if the studio is better, but our business, Knock on Wood, has been great from home. So I'm like, I want to stay here. Absolutely. I'm telling you, you don't need to be. I think things are going to change with all this COVID. And people like us are putting out content and people are tuning Absolutely. in. We get thousands of views. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there, I feel like people are looking for more real stuff. Right. Like, well, you know, absolutely. you being real, me being real, like, no bullshit right. and no, like, you know, I'm yeah. screwing up the screen sharing and, you know, we say something that's not right or we screw up a word. I mean, it's like, that's what people want. They connect with this. Absolutely. I really think they do. I mean, for mm -hmm. my viewers and people that are, are, you know, and every week there's more and more, as you know, it grows and then yeah, it, lives, it lives here. So people can come back and find it. Yep. So, I mean, eventually we're, we're, we, we, we've even put a little ad sheet in the back, you know, so far we haven't done it, but we said we, we would produce advertising because we have, yep. you know, I do have, you know, video and producers on staff because we do so much of our own B footage for, mm -hmm. um, for HSN. So we, you know, we're yeah. constantly producing for models and, you know, background footage and, so because of that, we can we can produce for anyone. So we said, if, you know, if produce commercials for other people. So it's kind of fun to have your foot in that in that door. And then and that we, we continually do stuff for us. I mean, we're all, what's really helping us is the social media and mm -hmm. enhancing my social media, which I never really did before. 
But yeah. now, it's, now it's really important for you as a oh. performer, for me as a, in business, for you as a performer and business. My it's, God, it's a hundred percent that right now. It's yeah. like people will look at your social media, Absolutely. even for small roles. <laughs> for wow, really? Media. Yeah, they look at your social media. If wow. you're an influencer, which you are an influencer, then yes. it's easier to get a role than if you're not an influencer. That is just so wild how things they they That's definitely true. turn around. And then there's some people who ha who have like millions of followers who really are, you're like, what? I don't get it. I mean, you know, but I mean, there's some, you know, on TikTok and thing, but I'm not putting it down. It's all good. It's this, all is good. More, this is more, I, what I love about what you're doing and what, what I'm doing is that it is a throwback to the long format, like the Tonight Show, which I loved. So these TikToks and all these, I mean, they're cute. I'll look at them and they're, they're precious, but you don't get to know people. And I think that people like hearing podcasts like Gilbert Gottfried has a, an amazing podcast that's taken off in the last few years. And I think people like hearing stories. I, that's just, I yeah. know I do. I'm more, you know, I listen for it when, when, when I'm, I mean, today I was just, the saints weren't on, my bucks weren't on. So I'm playing with the, I couldn't find anything, you know, on, on real TV. So I go to the, I go to the internet. That's I my here. And I think a lot of people are doing that. That's things are going to change. They're going to shift. Absolutely. Because they're shifting right now. So everything. I mean, the way that people are dressing, loungewear, we're getting ready to launch a loungewear line now. Um, PJs, please. Yeah. PJs. Yeah. I am I, all I order on Amazon are PJ bottoms. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> what I, I just I just designed over the weekend a bunch of I can't sew, but I have sewers and designers on staff, but they understand my designs. Um, a bunch of bottoms, like so many bottoms some, some that I know I wouldn't personally look good in, but some I know I would. And yeah. I, I think this is going to be a way of living. I'm not saying yeah. that eventually we don't want to go out, put our high heels on and look good. I, I think that'll be, but I think there's mm -hmm. going to be a lot more home time. I, and I well, think, that masks, I think masks are going to be around. I think we're going to end yeah. up like China. I think that people are going to be there's less coals. I mean, when I, when the few oh, places. Oh, right? Yeah. There's yeah. Like, hear people sneezing and hacking as much. I, yeah. I have not gotten sick since March. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It's amazing. We're washing our hands. I For know. What? Yeah. I peer out all the time, everywhere in every room in my house. And then I get everything delivered. And let me tell you, I am not going to a grocery store ever again. I'm a <laughs> That's right. That's what my husband and I say. So, so yeah. many of my friends have gone back to the grocery, but we haven't. Why? Every now and then I get a piece of fruit that isn't so good. So what? The most part, it is right on. Absolutely. Right. Oh, Amazon Fresh, I am a big fan. It's <laughs> my boyfriend. I'm like, oh, it's here. I know. I know. Instacart. So in the beginning, yeah. I was washing everything down. Now we don't do that. We don't wash No, anything. I don't do that anymore because it's like it's too much fear and too much craziness. But yes, definitely, you know, wear your masks and... Wash, wash your hands, hands and Purell and right yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're you're smart about it, you're gonna be fine. So been, oh my god, we've been talking for a long time, and I could talk to you forever. Well, Grace, I told you that you and I have to stay friendly, friendly, and then yeah. when all this is over, we we will come back to LA eventually, and we yeah. always do. I mean, you know, we have we have manufacturers and people out there, so we miss those trips. So we'll do that. You'll have to come in this direction. And, you know, you'll have to work, you know, just because you got to do the clubs. on. you got to do the clubs on the East Coast. Everybody does. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I would love to visit and you visit here and we hang out. That would be amazing. I would love that. But let's at least stay in touch. And I so Perfect. appreciate being on, oh, on the show. I do. Well, I'm so happy that you are on my show. I'm like so excited. I was I got my hair and makeup done today for you. Oh, my God. You look so beautiful. You look beautiful yeah. all the time. Yeah. So, you know what? I want to have you back on with Lydia. I think that would be a great oh, show. Yeah. I'm trying to put together a show with four girls, and I think you guys would be great. So, you, listen to this really quick, and then I'll, I'll let you go. You, Lydia, and do you know who Shelly Michelle is? Yes. Yeah. Shelly Michelle a, a, was the most famous body double of all time. She is still magnificent. Um, I mean, her body is crazy. So, I want her to come on and teach us. The tricks of modeling and how to look certain ways and, you know, like, you know, just poses. Wouldn't that be a fun show? That would be awesome. Okay, because I was looking for the right gals that would do it with me. And you guys being funny, and I know it would be funny. And I know, I, I just think it will be a blast. Because she has these tricks yeah. that when you take pictures, oh, my gosh, like she, like your legs look like they're, 
you know, 20 feet I long. I love it. I I'll can do that with my PJ bottoms. Yes. We'll do a, we'll do a pajama party <laughs> yes. and we'll put Shelly on the show and I'll get Lydia back and I'll, I'll get Marie to call you very soon for that. I love that. It's I love awesome. having my females. Oh, I, love it. I love my girls. I love Thank it. You. Yeah. You're, you're a girl's girl. You know, I have a lot of guy friends and I, I love like loving them. But um, the girls, you know, you get you need that girl energy. You gotta have girls in your life. You, you gotta, gotta have them. Yeah, you got to. I mean, I have a lot of men in my life, and and I have a lot of male friends, and I, I don't have any. I mean, when I say I don't have any, and it's not, my husband wouldn't be happy if I was sitting around talking to some guy. He just, of course, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I still stay in touch with people online, and we'll 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 text or we'll Facebook each other. But you know, I'm not one that's gonna say, "Hey, Joe, how you doing?" Let me. Oh, yeah, my husband, no. Well, no, I, I don't girlfriends, know. girlfriends, I, I yeah, they're they're so important. I miss my oh, lunch. But that'll happen again. We'll 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 all, we'll get back into it. But it's all gonna be in loungewear and pajamas. I love that. Yes, I have so many. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> well, we'll have to send you some pajamas. Now that I've been on your show, I have to send you yes. pajamas. I have pajamas in my line too. I now I these aren't the, these aren't the new ones, but I have some other ones that we still have in stock. So we'll send you a couple of it lounge. Right, I love that. And I'll wear them and we'll do the poses and all that. Oh I'm, all right. I'm in. perfect. Perfect. I love it. And this is this is the last question that I always ask my guests. Yes. Okay. So what would you like to be known for? Mm, the first thing that came to my mind is kindness. Oh so I love that. The first thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think kindness and giving and, 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 and giving back yeah. and that, you know, things change, you know, as you, you know, when you're, when you're young, you know, you have this certain goal, but you know, that's the overall thing because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. Yeah. It's, it is. It's like, you know, and, and family, but you know, you change as you get older, like things that like, I never thought I'd be a nester and a, uh, um, like loving the home life. Like I've actually liked being home like a lot. Like people think, Oh, mm -hmm. you're such a party girl because I throw a lot of parties, but I'm not like, I love this. So um, I think just, just being a good person and kindness. That's, that's really what I, and, 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 and dyeing my pubic hair. I, I had to say something funny on the comment. I can't, I can't Brazilian. That's what I'm, I'm toying with that I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> That'll be I all of it. Well, years ago, she's a very kind lady, but she died her. Mm -hmm. The care, yeah. <laughs> the crazy yeah. things we do. But I thank you so much for promoting all my stuff. And congratulations thank on you. all the stuff going on in your life, too. Thank well, you. We'll thank you so much. This is a big promotion festival. Thank yes. you. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in. Rhonda Shear, buy her book, her intimate apparel. I mean, she's got so many things going on. And, and watch her show Saturdays at 9 p.m. Eastern time. So I'll see you guys next week at 7 p.m. on Sunday.